Alpha. The yeah. process for us was in starting an organization, number one, we knew that we were going to be self-funded. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, again, I know I'm making comments like this a lot, but I understand that a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with what it looks like to start a church. Yeah, no. uh, and I remember we went out to eat with some friends of ours, and uh, they were like, so you're starting a church? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, and I love the way the guy, he got real serious. He's like, are you allowed to do that? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> especially if you br- grow up, like, in a, um, you know, in Catholicism, like, mm-hmm. you don't see a whole lot of, oh, like, yeah, we're yeah. starting a new St. Jude. It's yeah, like, but, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't this happen. church has been here since 18. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so it, the concept was foreign to a lot of people. And so for us, um, we launched Brave Church um, within a couple of networks of, of church planting um, associations. And so we're a part of a national association, then we're a part of another local association mm-hmm. of churches. Um, for us, you know, although there's a lot of things that we do alone, we didn't want to go alone. We wanted to have um, a lot of great insight and input from people that are older than us. You know, I'm, I'm 32 now. I was 30 when we planted the church, and I know that I can be an ignorant millennial like anyone else, and so it's important that we had a lot of great counsel, um, but then a big part of that was financially, um, you know, and there's a lot of different ways to start an organization, a lot of different ways you can start a church. Um, for us, we wanted to have the strongest start possible, and I think that that probably translates to any entrepreneurial endeavor, like yeah. you, you, how you start mm-hmm. could indicate how far you go yeah. and so we knew that we needed to have a strong start um you know there's churches that'll start in a living room and i was like hey we're well, just gonna have people over in our living room and talk about god and see where it goes that's cool and so we kind of did that we started growing what we called our launch team which was a a group of individuals and families that wanted to help start this church. How did um, you find those individuals? So uh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> In all honesty, uh, I came back to Wisconsin um, with an assumption that the people that I knew of growing up, the people I'd done ministry in the past, were going to be ecstatic that Jake Worth was starting to come, <laughs> coming back to our church. They weren't. They didn't care at all. Uh, and so I'd reached out to a lot of people, and honestly, like, they were plugged in with another church or just flat out they weren't interested. It got very discouraging because, you know, we moved back with the understanding that my parents would help start the church with us. And then I remember having coffee with a guy and told him, he's like, I'm in, count me in. Um, he doesn't even go to our church anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, like... It was, it was hard finding people that were going to help, you know, launch this church. So again, like, we wanted to start a church that would meet, that one of our expressions of doing ministry would be on Sunday mornings, where we would hold what we call a service. We would have a band that would play some music and lead people in time of worship. We would have a ministry just for kids. So we think that the best way to reach the next generation is to create something that's just for them. So we need people to lead that and volunteer that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we need, uh, we believe that church should feel like a little bit like home. So we're looking at, you know, we need people at the doors welcoming people. Mm -hmm. We need people to make coffee. You know, we need people to um, be on the worship team. And so Mm -hmm. again, like as you start building out this experience that you want to create, there's, you know, just on a Sunday morning, you're looking at at least 30 people that need to be involved. So that was like our number. We need at least 30 people to help start this church. And initially we had, you know, four, and that was me, Jackie, and, you know, my 60-year-old parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember... Hey, don't discount them, though, because I remember the oh, first time... No, I'm, dude, I'm just, they're I'm grinders, just, yeah. man. They no, freaking... I remember the first time I came to your church, um, my first experience of just driving in um, was your dad just waving and smiling. Oh, yeah, and man. It, and it gave me a feeling of, like, I don't know. Just give me a good feeling. For sure, to be there. small it's a thing, first, man. It is. It is such a small thing. But like, just being greeted made me want to go yeah. in so much more than like seeing somebody yep. happy that people are showing. Oh, up, right. You know? And I, dude, I'm probably a little too anal about small things like that. Like, yeah. I know the saying goes, "Don't sweat the small I stuff." I'm stuff. on the opposite. Yeah. I'm like, sweat the small stuff because a lot of times that's the only stuff that you can handle. Yeah. Like, I can't handle the big stuff, and mm-hmm. I think that this is a business principle. Like, you. would You can't necessarily predict the future of your company, the future Mm -hmm. of your business, but you can predict what you do today, and that's a small thing that you can handle. And so, you know, initially we had a small team, but then it was pretty awesome, like how all of a sudden people people out of like left field that I didn't even know Mm -hmm. just started reaching out to us. Hey, we heard you're starting a church. We'd love to hear more about it. And so by 
July, we had a team of about 30, which again, that's still like on the, uh, um, you know, shallow end. Like, you know, a lot of churches try to get to about a 75 person um, launch team. And so we were about 30, 35. We started doing what we call preview services or for those uh, retail store owners, soft launches, where every other Sunday we did what we call the preview service, which was basically a way of doing church and giving our permission to mess up and have it be crap. Mm -hmm. so that we could say, hey, we're going to get better by the time we have real church. And so we did those up until September 15th, and then we launched the church in in September. And so um, throughout there, I mean... You know, we were growing a team, but we were also raising funds. Um, you know, m- money to it uh, to any organization is it's the heartbeat. It's, you know, m- you know, for for businesses, no money, no margin. For churches, no money, no ministry. And so we went um, into a fundraising phase um, where we ended up raising just under 150k. Um, and uh, a lot of that, honestly, was. <laughs> It was not because I'm a good fundraiser. I think a lot of that had to do with just previous relationships, having been faithful in the past, having been faithful in our previous ministries. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that there's a lot to be said about that. I think, you know, I've done a ton of things wrong. I certainly have not led at the best level um, throughout this process, but I am grateful that, you know, even in my early 20s into my late uh, 20s, sowing into seasons that I knew I was going to leave, like investing into relationships, investing into businesses, companies that I knew I'm not going to stay here forever. Mm -hmm. I can speak to millennials because I am one. Um, You know, I'm on the tail end, 87. Um, uh, But like, I think that there's oftentimes uh, a tendency to look at our current position, you know, whether you're you, you have a dream of starting a business, but you're working for someone else's business. The tendency is to, you know, half-ass it mm-hmm. while you're at your current employment yeah. until, because you're not going to be there. Oh, I and, felt that. Yeah, yeah. I felt and that I would say, man, there's a lot of yeah. danger in that. It is. Um, because number one, you don't know how that is developing you for where you're going. Mm-hmm. And secondly, you don't know how that relationship mm-hmm. is going to impact what you're going to try to do in oh, the next man. season. <laughs> oh, I feel that completely. Hey guys, thanks for watching our podcast today. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you'd be willing to support us, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, comment in the section below what questions you want to hear us answer or what industries you want to see us go after. And if you didn't like my face, check out Dan's face. It might be more to your fitting. Otherwise, have a good day, guys. Thanks.